is endless. For example, a hundred years ago in 1898, Sir James Dewar was the first person to produce hydrogen in a liquid form. An important discovery in itself. What's more, to carry out his research, Dewar needed a container that would keep the gas liquefied, and so he invented this, the vacuum flask. And of course, we still use them today, it's just that they look more like that, and they're quite handy for keeping drinks hot as well. Another scientist to work here was Sir Humphrey Davy. He's best known for his experiments in electrochemistry and his invention in 1815, the miner's safety lamp. At the time, mines were lit by candles and oil lamps. The problem was that the naked flames could cause an explosion if they came into contact with methane, a gas sometimes found in coal mines. It took Davy just six weeks to come up with a solution, and this was it. What made this different from other lamps is that the flame was surrounded by a metal gauze, so that if there were gas around, it would prevent the flame from coming outside and causing an explosion. Simple, really, but very effective. The Royal Institution continues to be an important centre for scientific research. Their scientists are world leaders in solid-state chemistry, catalysis and computer modelling. Who knows what discoveries will be made from that. Many of the institution's major scientific discoveries have been demonstrated to the public in this theatre. But not today. Instead, there's one of their lectures for children, which happened throughout the year. Today's is called How Hot is a Cold? I've got some gas coming out of here. Nothing will happen to that until I heat it. I've got a piece of metal here. It's a metal called magnesium. If I heat it with the flame, the metal begins to balloon, burn. I've got a balloon here with some gas in it. Perhaps the institution's best-known talks are its Christmas lectures, an opportunity for children to learn in a fun way from some of the world's most talented scientists. <laughs> the person who started these lectures over 150 years ago was the most important and creative experimental scientist of his day, Michael Faraday. If you haven't heard of him, you might well have seen him on the back of a £20 note. Faraday introduced these popular lectures at a time when science wasn't widely taught in schools. Yes, every year at Christmas time, this theatre would be crowded with young people wanting to know more about the fascinating world of science. The first lecture took place in 1826. I'd recently been made director of the laboratory at the Royal Institution. Not bad, considering my background. It certainly wasn't. Born in 1791, Faraday was the son of a blacksmith. He didn't have much of an education and at 13 started work at a bookbinder's. He had an incredible hunger for knowledge and was particularly fascinated by science, reading every book he could find on the subject. But the thing that really caught my interest was electricity, which I was able to explore further in 1813 when I got a job in the laboratory of the Royal Institution. He was just one of many scientists intrigued by electricity. At that time, no one was exactly sure what could be done with it. Then, in 1820, Danish scientist Hans Ørsted showed that an electric current would produce a magnetic effect. Permit me to demonstrate. I have here a compass and a magnet. And when I bring the two together, you can see that the needle moves, showing there's a magnetic field. Now, what Ørsted did is he took a wire with an electrical current going through it from a battery and put that above the needle. As you can see, it has the same effect, showing that a magnetic field has been produced. Ørsted's discovery got Faraday thinking. He started experimenting, wondering if this relationship between electricity and magnetism could be used to produce mechanical movement. And on September the 3rd, 1821, this is what I came up with. I put a magnet upright in a bowl of liquid mercury. The hanging wire is connected to a current from a battery, as is this wire, which is attached to the side of the bowl. And then, when I complete the circuit, there they go, there they go. Faraday had produced the world's first ever electric motor. It was an astonishing breakthrough. He summed up his achievements as... Very 
satisfactory. It must make more sense of what I've raised us. For the next 10 years, Faraday concentrated mainly on chemistry. During this time, he came up with a new method for liquefying gases, as well as discovering the chemical benzene, which these days is used to make motor fuels. But all the time at the back of his mind was the thought that, as he'd been able to create an electric current from a magnetic field, then maybe, just maybe, he could also do the opposite and use magnetism to create electricity. What an achievement that would be. You see, in my day, the only sources of electricity were huge batteries which would run out very quickly, or machines like this, which could only produce a single spark at a time. Faraday thought long and hard. Until, of course, on August the 29th, 1831, he made the most momentous discovery. And this was the apparatus I used. A soft iron ring with two separate insulated copper coils wound onto it. The right-hand one was connected to a battery. The left-hand one to a galvanometer, which is an instrument which measures electric current. When I made the connection with the battery, the needle on the galvanometer moved, which meant I'd succeeded in creating a flicker of electricity where previously there was none. In other words, the electricity in this coil created magnetism in the iron ring, which in turn induced electricity in the second coil. Over the next few weeks, Faraday tried out many different combinations of coils and magnets until on October the 17th, 1831, I carried out the most important experiment in the history of electricity. This time, no battery was involved. I took a single coil and connected it to a galvanometer, but for the purposes of today's experiment, we simply have these two lights. I then take my magnet and move it in and out of the coil, and as you can see, the lights flicker. For the first time, I'd succeeded in creating electricity from magnetism. Faraday realised it was the movement of the magnet that had produced the electric current, and in doing so, he'd invented the first dynamo. It was a discovery of great importance, and one which helped to spur industrial development in his day. Today, the same principles are still used in power stations to generate electricity. Oh, what a guy! Oh, yeah. Do you know what, I'm going to say something profound here. Go on, stand by for this, because you know what? Without Faraday, studios mm -hmm. like this wouldn't even exist. There'd be no lights, no cameras, no, no Bonnie and Mabel. We'd have no oh. job, I'm telling you. No us. Not a bad thing. Thank you for that. Thank you. Very good. Blue Peter Badge winners getting free to the Faraday Museum. There are more details on our website and on our CPAX pages, starting at page five two five. Now tomorrow is some.